David, you're muted. Of course I'm muted. I wouldn't be alive <laughs> without a muting. Can you hear me now, Warren? Yes, you can. The sound man himself. Warren Ringham, everybody. David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome. Welcome to a uh, to an online event that's a celebration of something that was in person. Warren, last year, what happened last year? Well, David, we got together at the Indigo at the O2 in London, the very iconic location for obviously the intro of The World Is Not Enough. And uh, we had a, an amazing concert with complete sellout, 1,700 people. And the great thing about last year's concert, which is the same as what we're doing this year, is that we celebrated some big anniversaries. Last year, there was three, of course. We had From Russia With Love, 60, uh, Live and Let Die, 50, and Octopussy, 40. So we tied in some guests with that as well, didn't we? We did. And yeah, I tell you, that was what I was most intrigued with. And I think a lot of the people that attended and what people are going to see today is that this is about storytelling. And it's storytelling through, obviously, music. This is a concert spectacular, first and foremost. But also the stories that the Bond alumni told, you know, that the hosts up there told the little stories. And we were all able to engage each other. But then, not too long ago, you thought, wouldn't it be nice to share this with the Bond community? What, what inspired you to do this today? Well, I mean, the great thing about the Bond community is that this is a well, my sort of motivation really for doing these things is bringing everybody together. And I think that's the fabulous part. I, I've been really excited about this all week and particularly all of today. Um, just the opportunity to really bring everyone together and just enjoy it as a community and as a group of friends. Um, and that's, you know, one of the most inspiring and motivational things about uh, doing this band. And obviously tonight, you know, it's completely free. It's a chance for people around the world or perhaps weren't able to make the concert to enjoy it. And from my point of view, from Q the Music point of view, it's our opportunity to give something back to all of you guys that support us so fantastically, um, which is obviously a really, really important part of it, because this is all about, as I say, it's about um bringing everyone together, keeping the James Bond love going and a sort of safe space really for Bond geeks like you and I to come together. A safe space is a great way to put it because earlier this week we had a uh, not so space, safe space, which was the media all around a potential <laughs> new Bond that went crazy. People were shouting it as the gospel, of course. Um, but it, it just, it harkens back to the fact that I think everybody's reaction was due to, we're hungry, nay, yeah. We're starving yeah. for something James Bond. So to have nearly four hours of Bond entertainment, um, we're just very thankful for this, Warren. Well, I'm thankful to you as well because you've played such a brilliant part. And, you know, the the, the day yeah. that, that you yeah. said that you were coming on board was like, yes, get in, oh. David's on. So, you know, it was it was a, an amazing experience to, um, to be able to team up with you. And, oh, my goodness, everyone's going to see what an incredible job uh, of comparing that you did and and even the band everyone's going to me because obviously you know the some of the band don't know you like i do because they're maybe not quite as the geeks they're, they're bond fans but not to the level that they're going to sit and necessarily watch um you know all the amazing product stuff that you do but everyone's coming to me and going my god where did you find him he's incredible he doesn't miss a beat you know down the street in the alley that's where you found uh, me I and i've got to tell everyone something really important that yeah I hope you won't mind me saying this. I'm oh. sure you won't because it's a compliment to you. But so one of the things that I said to you was that we'll have a little prompter for you on the stage, not with a script, but just maybe bullet points so that when you're on stage, if there's kind of markers that we need you to hit or whatever, or you want to remember, you've just got that in front of you. Um, and literally five minutes before the show, the little cable that ran to the side of the stage where you could turn the sort of turn the page over for the next one. Um, it broke and you're like, yeah, no worries. We, we just did it without the whole thing without and you nailed every single one. It was amazing. Yeah. So please, when you see me up on stage, I mean, the, 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 obviously the orchestra is without approach. When you see me up on stage and I flub, I'm just, I'm literally just a Bond fan trying to do a job and it was improv. And I have to tell you, and you didn't know this, Warren, I never told you this. I was nervous before I went actually up on stage. I was not nervous because there were, you know, 2000 people in the room. I was nervous because I wanted to make sure I did a good job because cue the music has such a good reputation. And I wanted to make sure that nobody walked away saying, Oh, you know, it was pretty good except for that guy, <laughs> that American. Why did they have him? No, 
absolutely. And they certainly didn't do that. But, you know, I mean, I have the same feelings. You know, you you want everyone to go away from these concerts thinking it's the best thing they've ever seen. You know, anything less for me is a failure, really. And, um, you know, that that's what we're aiming for. So you, you and I share that without a doubt. And uh, I mean, I, I don't know if that I was... Well, I was I, I was stressed out on the day. I'll say that because you know we always really set the bar really high and probably bite off more than uh, I can chew. Um, but we somehow always managed to pull it together, and yeah, we did on this one. I think. Well, you, you hopefully did. people will see. And it was a reawakening. I mean, this was. I mean, people need to know that this was by demand. I mean, people really yeah. brought you know the enthusiasm, the emotion, brought cue the music back. But now, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. You are doing some concerts, of course, leading up to a particular one in October where I may show up again. But talk to us, Ben, about now being back sort of on the road, what people can experience live. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, as you say, we, we called it a day. Well, I announced it during COVID that we were going to to, to call it a day. And, and the last show would have been October 2022 at Her Majesty's Theatre. And at the time I made that call, it was absolutely the right call then. Um, but, you know, subsequently when it came to that last show, I think everybody around the show, supporting the show, myself, everyone kind of went, do you know what? There's more life left in this. And people really, really wanted it. So I had, it's not an exaggeration to say I had over a thousand messages calls texts emails everything saying please don't stop please don't stop and, and when there's such a, a demand as you know um as elliot carver sorry as bond said to elliot carver you know give the people what they want so um you know it, it, and the thing is is that i do love doing it um absolutely so the the aim anyway now is we've got 12 shows this year and hopefully we're going to keep growing it and i'm hoping to actually um just really just do as many as we can next year and just see where it takes us really lots of people already commenting in the comments about the us i've seen it's definitely on uh, the bucket list we really want to come believe me it's it's yeah. been a 20 year dream of mine so you know i think we're edging closer to that point and um you know i know you and i have already talked about that maybe one day we might be able to make that happen not we're, too I far away it's a goal. I mean, in every step yeah. of the way, even things like this today get us closer to that goal. I will say that uh, the O2 Arena in 2024, the celebration that's going to be happening mid-October, um, which happens on a Sunday, we have in our links down below in the description, plus I'm inserting it sometimes into the chat, you can still get tickets there and celebrate. And it is, I, I'm not using this word loosely. It's a, oh, look at you. Look at you. Yeah, fancy the fancy. Yeah. Um, it is a celebration. I mean, it yeah. it's because people, what they do is they don't, they don't just go for a Sunday. They come, especially people out of town. They spend a whole weekend there doing things on Friday, Saturday. There's some celebrations uh, there. I know that uh, 007 GB has a wonderful celebration. I believe it's sold out, but there's a waiting list for Operation Solex. Do I have that uh, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, I, know, yeah. I know we have them here because look at this. We got this very nice thing. Good evening, afternoon, David and Warren. So I know they're they're lurking about. But then after that, at the Hippodrome on Saturday, um, I'm going to be hosting a celebration, um, Operation Gold Linger, as in linger and hang yeah. around, uh, which is, a again, a free event uh, where you can just come and meet and greet and join some libation. The Hippodrome has been amazing. They've pretty much given us a, a room. Uh, where we can just be Bond geeks and then get some good sleep because the next day, of course, is the concert. And, and just tell us a little bit before we start this show, tell us about this concert this year coming up. Well, then we've got two amazing guests, uh, Maud Adams and Britt Eklund, who are going to help us celebrate um, a Man with the Golden Gun. We've got the 50th anniversary of that. 60 years of Goldfinger. So we're definitely going to um, pay a very big homage to that with 20 minutes of music from Goldfinger and some other cool little surprises linked in with that. And it is also 25 years of uh, The World's Not Enough. So um, obviously being back at uh, Indigo uh, was a bit of a no-brainer to kind of tie in with that. And there might be a little bit of music to to uh, tie in with that as well and you know you can actually see a lot of the program will be printed in our tour program this year so um that's not really going to be a surprise 
uh, for people. So you'll be able to sort of have a look at what we're going to be doing. But um, it's going to be an amazing concert, just like last year's was. Massive band, orchestra, in fact, let's call it what it is, an orchestra. And, you know, I think the thing that you have to get across if you've not seen Cue the Music is that it's just all about a love of Bond. And it's about at the centre of it, you know, we've got two massive Bond fans with me and David. And, you know, it's all about giving Bond fans what they want. And because we are one of you, <laughs> we we think we kind of know what it is that you want. Oh, that's the that's the aim anyway. That is the aim. And and um, listen, we we have to keep the trains on time. Good news. I hope it's good news to you all. Uh, mm -hmm. Warren and I are going to join you back at the end, almost like an after party, a virtual after party where we'll celebrate together. We want to take all your comments. Two things you should know. First of all, I don't know if um, any of you have any libations. Um, I myself have. Uh, I'm, I went very traditional. Hold on. Oh, ASMR. Oh, I love it. Um, I've got a nice ice cold <laughs> vodka with a Bond experience glass that I'll be sipping from and just kicking back. We will be answering some of you in the chat. But what's really nice is check this out. Hold on, folks. Boom. Like Hussain Hussain said, David was an excellent MC, didn't put a foot wrong in my books. I just, that was random that I put that up. That was not random. Oh. Of course, of that was course, not random yeah. at all. But we, yeah. we're from time to time going to be putting your comments into the video, and yeah. you get to be a part of the show. And of course, happily, we do have that ten minute break in between, right, Warren, to let people we go do. to the bathroom. We have a ten minute interval. Yeah, yeah. All right. What else, what have I left on the table? Anything? Are we ready to start the show? I think we're ready to go. Should we rock and roll? Let's do it, baby. Here we go.
I'm having a little bit of a geek out moment because that is actually my YouTube theme and I did not even know that was going to happen. So there you go. Uh, first of all, yes, my name is David Zaritsky and I am a James Bond fan, which in this room sounds a, a little bit like a co confession or, I don't know, a self-help group of Bond fans. But it's actually a really important distinction for tonight because tonight's experience is really for Bond fans by Bond fans, which is extremely unique. Which, by the way, good news, that means that this is a Bond geek safe zone. This is not work, right? He knows. 
This is not a family reunion where you have to hide the corgi car behind you. You can be as geeky as you want. You can do lines, you can do quotes, you can laugh. We want it all because you are amongst friends. Now, because of that, I love to call, I love to call James Bond, I don't know, this great equalizer. So when you walked in here tonight, it actually doesn't matter what you do for a living. It certainly doesn't matter what your politics are or your religion. If you have this burning passion around James Bond, you're in the same group. And well done. And by the way, not all of you have the same burning passion. I actually want to address the, uh, the friends, the families, the spouses who were coerced, I'm sorry, convinced that coerced is wrong. I was told not to use that. Convinced to come tonight because you may have come in as a casual Bond fan, or as I like to call it, a Bond fan by proxy. But I'm going to forecast something, a premonition, if you will. Tonight, you are going to leave more like one of us, Google gobble, one of us. Trust me, if you know, you know. Uh, the other thing is tonight, it's very important. The reason I think you're going to leave as fans, who doesn't like good storytelling? And you're going to hear storytelling in the form of music, of songs, of anecdotes from Bond alumni from different movies. And on top of that, we're going to have wonderful escapism. I get it. You walked in here with certain stress, pressures, job, news. Put them in a box. Put it all the way down. It's going to explode later, trust me. But put it down way below for now. Because at the best of James Bond is truly about escapism. Unless missiles are raining down on him. Not so much then. But you know something, even that controversy we're going to put aside for tonight because we are here to celebrate. I mean, think about how special this is as Bond fans. We're in a year where we're celebrating three James Bond movies. We've got From Russia With Love, 60 years. We've got Live and Let Die, 50. Hey, this guy's really interacting with me. I love this. <laughs> this isn't the comedy club, but no, I like what you're doing. But on the top of that, you also have Octopussy. A lot, of, a lot of rankings of Octopussy, pretty high, I love it. And what we're going to do with the celebration is we're gonna do the next song as a forecast because next year, next year is the 60th anniversary of what some people might call the quintessential James Bond film. So, ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, and enjoy Goldfinger.
He looks at the world and wants it all. So he strikes like thunderbolt. He knows the meaning of success. His needs are more so he gives less. They call him the winner who takes all, and he strikes like thunderbolt. His days of asking are all gone His fight goes on and on and on But he thinks that the fight is worth it all All right, so for our first movie celebration of the year, we have a very special treat tonight. It's From Russia With Love, hard to believe, 60 years. For many people, this is one of the most incredible Bond films because it's not just a great Bond film, it's just a great film. Spy, intrigue, it has all the different components of the best Bond films. The other component is the people that make them. And tonight, we have Zora, this is my best Zora, that's all you get. Zora the Gypsy Girl, who had that wonderful fight. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the stage Martine Beswick. <laughs> Keep dancing to that. Martine, by the way, we, we promise to give you behind the scenes as much as possible. Mar Martine was behind the stage saying, this is incredible. After all these years to have so many people show up. Wow. Yeah, it's special. Wow. <laughs> that was her exclamation the whole entire time. Isn't it great? This is for you. Oh, thank you for coming. Wow. Amazing. So, you know, uh, Martina and I have been on vacations together. It's not like that. Uh, we've, we've done some things together from a Bond standpoint. Tonight, we have a promise to fulfill. I promise them stories. Okay. All right, so we're going to pick your brain about stories. First one I'm going to ask is about a love in your life. And it's not who you think, and it's not Sean Connery, but it's Terrence Young. Oh. Tell us about your relationship with Terrence Young, and, and how did he engage you for the part? Okay, I'm going to try to make this really short because it could go on and on, like Bond. Um, what happened was that I was sent out to be Honey Rider 
to meet Terence for Honey Rider for the first one. And he took one look at me and he said, you need some experience. You haven't had any, I, I've done nothing. So you had not go and get some experience. He said, because I have an idea. He already had an idea in his mind of what he wanted to do with me. And it's not that, <laughs> okay? Anyway, so I mean, so he, I went off and I did what he told me and I started doing some TV and I did stuff. And then I met him socially because my friend Chris Blackwell had done Dr. No after he'd done it. And suddenly we became great friends. And he kept his promise because when From Russia With Love came up, he said, you're gonna be my gypsy girl. And I went, oh, really? Oh, what do I have to do? He said, fight. I said, oh, perfect. <laughs> I was known as battling Beswick. <laughs> did, you, did you have any fight training, or this is something you just brought oh, from the streets? <laughs> God, no. <laughs> no, actually, I dance. I love to dance. So for me, it was sort of, basically, it was choreographed for three weeks. We really worked it all out. Because the other thing, too, is that Terence wanted to do a handheld camera really come in close. So it had to be choreographed. And it really worked. It really worked. And, and we worked together really well, Elisa Gurr. She was not my sister, but all my others are sisters. But we really, we really got a really good fight going. So. Do what? Yeah, Martine did pretty good for herself, all right? Let's leave it at that. <laughs> they wanted to know if she got hurt. No, she didn't, because, you know, they, they did try to get me to kind of... No, I wouldn't do it. No hurting. Just stop short. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about... You've told me some amazing stories I think they'd like to hear. Terence would set up a James Bond set, almost like the world of James Bond, with opulence. Oh. And tell us a little bit about what you encountered as oh. an actor. I mean, first of all, he... I mean, not on... Um, Russia with Love so much because we were on the back lot of Pinewood so it wasn't quite the same thing but then then two years later um, the part came up for Paula the island girl and everybody they were looking for some girl English girl for the island girl and the Terrence said, don't be ridiculous. She's a proper island girl. I mean, this is from Jamaica. Don't be ridiculous. And he pushed it and pushed it and pushed it. They kept saying, no, no, no. And he pushed it and made it happen. So, because we were also best friends and we also knew that, you know, this had to happen. So, when I finally got onto it, when we got onto it and we went to, <clears throat> excuse me, Bahamas, it was amazing. There were, like different tribes and Terence and Sean and several of us were a little tribe and Kevin McClory we were also like so it was constantly champagne and caviar on the nights off and it was just not only that my favorite story which you've probably heard is that I was so pale because I hadn't seen the sun for years in fact I was gray because I'd been out every night dancing, and suddenly he said, do you have to get a tan? And you have to eat, because you're too thin. So I was, put on the, <laughs> I was put on the cold sheet every day to come out to the set while they were working and tan myself and eat everything. Well, what a problem. <laughs> the, the, the challenges of a Bond actor, right? <laughs> Unbelievable. What a gift that is. <laughs> but speak, speaking of a gift, so let's, let's talk about tonight because, and again, behind the scenes, you were a little surprised but in a wonderful way about all these wonderful people spending wow. the evening with you. What do you think the secret ingredient is to James Bond that keeps people coming back for more? I, I wish I knew. Because the thing is that I, I mean, with all my Bond girls, by the way, who are my sisters who I adore, Everybody, I mean, there's Carol in the audience. <laughs> I 
And there are many, many of us that we really, really love being with each other. It's, we turn to each other and go, every now and again when, when we do one of these, we go, yes, but this goes on. How does this go on? So I don't know, the, the secret is, of course, it's probably one of the biggest franchises ever. And it will probably go on because we don't know who the next one is going to be, do we? Could be somebody in the audience. Anything's possible. What? No, we don't have that surprise tonight. <laughs> imagine, imagine. But it, you have a great point because I think the reason it goes on is exactly what we're doing here. People are engaged and they love good storytelling. And yeah. James Bond, as formulaic as some people may say it is, is still good storytelling. Yes, yeah, yeah. Even if it isn't Ian Fleming writing it, you know what I mean? <clears throat> no, it's, I don't know. There's something, I must say, that I do miss Sean. Hmm, he was mine. <laughs> For many people, he is still the pattern of bond that others emulate, yeah. but still the pattern that they work from. Yeah. And, by, and by the way, I, I had said this to you upstairs, because of you and because of your connection to Sean, the suit I'm wearing is actually off the pattern of his suit from Dr. <laughs> He's talking too long. <laughs> Don't clap for that. I saw that. I'll be back. But, but I, I do want to end on this because you do have a room full of fans. You have fans up here as well. What does the connection to the fans mean? Because you truly do feel like you drink that up. I do because I really appreciate, first of all, there's so much. Listen, let's face it. I love love and I get a lot of love. So how can I say no? Hugs and loves from all of them. What? I'd like to meet you afterwards, Miss <laughs> We'll take your number at the front, security. <laughs> security. Uh, but it is, it is, there is a, there is a, when I ever I meet, there is such a wonderful energy yeah. exchange between the, the fans and myself that it, there's an addiction. There's an addiction. As there is an addiction from you all to bond. I mean, because. It, that is the bond that we have, actually. Oh, you're right. Let's yeah. hear it. Yeah. Martine, we'll leave you with this. Um, I think what you talk about, love, loving love, it's, it's a sense of all of us feeling very connected to you and the people that were part of the films, that in a way we feel like you're walking off the screen. And if we can have a connection to you and understand it's a real person who can love everybody in the world of Bond, it makes it a little bit more approachable and embraceable. But I want to thank you for coming tonight. Oh, Martine Beswick, you. everybody. Thank you. Thank you all. And guess what? We get to do something very special. And what is that? What do I do? We have a wonderful surprise for you and for everyone else. Uh -oh. They've created a buffet, uh -huh. a smorgasbord, say that 20 times, of music from Russia with Love. We've got the gun barrel coming up. We've got stalking. James Bond is back from Russia with Love, and finally, the James Bond theme. Shall we go off stage and listen to it? Yeah. Let's do it. Ladies Thank and gentlemen, you. cue the music.
Well, this next song, uh, it was a huge hit. I mean, there's no other way to put it. This was a monstrous hit. I think a part of it was spurred on by the fact that the movie was a hit. It was a well-appointed movie, well-liked by the fans, and in an anniversary year, 50th anniversary year, during the Olympics. So a lot of things going for it. The takeaway, though, really has to be that this was the film that taught us how to get rid of rats in Festigan Island. And I mean, the grandmother actually made it up. They bury the oil drum, you put some coconut, and one by one, boing, 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 boing the, the rats come. Do you throw it away? No, you leave it. And then they begin to eat each other. I could go on all night, but ladies and gentlemen, you'd rather hear the music. Skyfall.
So I think it's important to acknowledge the fact that one of the reasons why this night is so special is we're in a bond location. I mean, Martina and I just, we just talked about the whole idea of immersing yourself into a bond moment. You're in it right now. The O2 Arena was, of course, used in The World Is Not Enough. Right, an amazing scene. A lot of you I saw taking pictures out there. It's okay, I told you, this is a geek safe zone. You're allowed to do that. The other thing we're gonna prove on the, the, the geek safe zone is the fact that the next song was something that was written for The World Is Not Enough, but it was never used. I mean, soundtrack, it was for the end titles, but it was never used. So what Cue the Music wanted to do was, just for all of you tonight, was to return this song back to this location and let it resound in the very ceilings. So ladies and gentlemen, only have yourself to blame. So there's nothing more than Bond fans like is to 
push out an issue or something wrong. Of course, I had the wrong title to that. It's only myself to blame. Warren, I got that all wrong. And by the way, I only have myself to blame, which, by the way, is the theme of when my wife asks, who kept the toilet seat up? <laughs> only myself to blame. So how I got that wrong, I have no idea. But I'm going to redeem myself, or I'm going to make an attempt, because we talked about locations just now, and this next grouping of music is going to conjure up in your mind, and this is how we use our imagination, because we're Bond films, conjuring up the films themselves. I think you're going to see, when you're listening to this music, volcanoes. I think you're going to see beautiful mountaintop layers disguised as allergy centers in Switzerland. I think you might even see, who knew, an oil rig with a little bit extra cheek showing. So prepare yourself for that. Ladies and gentlemen, you only live twice. We have all the time in the world and diamonds are forever. That's all we have 
Cigars, cigarettes, teddy bears, CDs, game cards. Strangely, this feels um, natural for me. I don't know why. Uh, so we have an intermission coming up. This is a little tongue in cheek of that. We do have some wonderful Cue the Music merchandising. And who doesn't want to take home a little Cue the Music? First of all, is everybody having a great time? We shouldn't be having this much fun on a school night, and yet here we are, James Bonding, who even knew. But we've got some wonderful things. By the way, if I see the teddy bears on eBay tomorrow, I'm gonna be upset, because they're going quick, that's all I'm saying. All right, well, here we go. We're gonna go into the intermission. First of all, it's a great opportunity. I'm a big believer of this. These are rare moments when we can all get together as James Bond fans. Please go out there, socialize, talk to each other. If you see somebody you recognize, get a picture with them, just say hello to them, acknowledge them. This is a wonderful moment. So we'll have that intermission. But before we go into the intermission, this is, this is how just say roll. We've got to send you out in a very special way. So coming up next is a potpourri of different Bond songs that are pretty special to people. We have The Living Daylights, a view to a kill, and then of course, nobody does it better.
hopes are way too high The feelings in the way we die Set your hopes up way too high The feelings in the way we die Someone 
gentlemen, on behalf of myself and the whole of Cue the Music, we'd just like to say what an absolute honour it is to be here this evening. And we just want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time and travelling, some of you very, very far, just to be here with us this evening. So like I say, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we will continue our journey through the music of Mr. James Bond. Thank you! Darling, you're the Thank you. 
All right, we're going to continue our anniversary celebration with a movie that, yes, it did inspire this change, Octopussy. Octopussy, that's right, having its 40th anniversary, which is rather remarkable. I mean, Sir Roger Moore engaging, and it's really become, I hate to call it a slow burn, but it seems to have gotten more appreciated by the fans over time. And I'll keep going with the confession. It was my son who actually got me to rewatch it again and not see it as, oh, a fun little lark, but something that actually has a really good spy intrigue to it. So I feel very honored tonight with our special guests, the fact that they're going to be able to tell us some intriguing stories around the world of Octopussy. So without further ado, I give you Christina Wayborn and Tony and David Meyer. Here we are again, right? <laughs> 40 years later. This is remarkable, isn't it? Just a few thousand of your closest friends. Amazing. Amazing, right? Christina, let's, let's start with you, because again, we're about storytelling tonight, and we always are fascinated about... By the way, we're not being played off the Oscars. This is gonna be in the background, because it's appropriate. Where's my Oscar? <laughs> yeah, we've had our 30 seconds, and it's up. Um, but what we're trying to do is really get an understanding of what is it like when you engage to be in this particular role? It was fantastic. Um, I had just completed playing Greta Garbo uh, in Hollywood and they called me from uh, Pinewood and they came out to MGM, one of the offices where Garbo got her raise actually. It was still there at that time. And Kabi and Barbara and Michael Wilson and the gang, you know, John Glenn came in. And they'd already decided that I was going to be in their movie. So I just said, thank you. <laughs> and um, a few months later, I came to London, stayed at the Connaught Hotel. I don't know if it's still there, but it was very bondish, you know, because I hadn't read the script at all. So one night at 11 o'clock or so, a script is inserted under the door. Very and bond, right? I hadn't read it. And I started reading it and I get to the page where I'm gonna say, that's my little octopusy. And I called my agent and I said, are you kidding me? And she said, go ahead, get it all out because you're gonna do this. <laughs> And I said, well, I'm going to be in bed with Roger Moore. And I said, send me some double stick carpet tape because I've got to make some sort of adjustments here so nothing snaps off in the middle of this, which she did. So, um, you know, 10% can do a lot of <laughs> good things for you. I did not realize we were going to get the tell-all book tonight, but somebody <laughs> That's just a small somebody's going to publish okay? this. Wow. <laughs> All right, Tony and David, sort of the same question. I mean, I know that you were doing acting already. They needed twins. Did they tell you that up front, that we need a pair of twins? They, um, they had somebody in mind, apparently, but they didn't want to do them, real, real um, cabaret artists. Yes, we had done a bit of acting, thank you very much. Yes, it, not always together, but enough to realize that, well, we work through differences. We are twins, but when suddenly it, come to terms with how different we were, we began to act twins better, if that makes sense. And um, so, how could we resist? I mean, male population is divided by those who want to be James Bond and those who want to be villains. Villains are much more fun. And, um, uh... <laughs> oh, much more fun, yes. Um, yes, you have looking villainous. But when they first put those wigs on us, it was the 1980s, the decade of big hair. And uh, 
wake up these weeks and I went back to the dressing room and looked in the mirror and all I could see was the vision of my mother when she'd just come from the hairdressers. Right, I'm playing a James Bond villain and I look like my mother. But the boots and the, the leather jackets and, and the knives helped about that. Uh, and uh, of course, the, a lot of knives in the leather jackets, which the, of course the, the lady had to keep counting. Now you threw one from there, and it goes on. And uh, our purple shirts, which one time about 12 people were walking around the set in. Yes, indeed. Um, and of course, James Bond pinches my costume. So it seems like I'm on the film longer than I actually have because my costume lives up. Amazing. Hold on to that because we have a lot more questions. But Christina, I assume that was your own hair. You did not have stunt hair to do that? No, I didn't. But it, was your mother good with a bread knife or? Was your mother good with a bread knife, I said. Yeah, we did have lessons about knife throwing from a, it's called an Apache group, it was a man who had a girlfriend, a very trusting girlfriend, um, who he threw around the stage and then threw knives at. And uh, we did do a lot of practicing on that, but just before the, the circus scene, a little brat came up to me and said, I bet you can't really throw those knives. <laughs> um, and people will always want to know how, how how we threw those knives. I didn't really throw knives when he was on the, on the disc. That was the model, yeah. <laughs> I actually said, um, you know, I, I'll, I'll be all right with the real guy, but um, I'm, I'm, he, 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 it, I had a model of me, which was an extraordinary experience. I don't know whether you've ever had to do that. You know, I was sort of made a plaster cast yes. of me. Um, extraordinary experience in itself. So there was that, and there was the man throwing that, and there was James Bond. So there were lots of costumes, but they, they were cool. Yeah, they were nice. They were very nice. And by the way, they're still in today, which is actually kind of remarkable. But Christina, uh, we were talking yesterday, and you had made mention about John Glenn's direction and some special directions that he gave you specifically when you are betting Bond. Well, yes. He said, you be the aggressor. And I said, oh, yeah, just devour him. I said, okay, I think I can do that. <laughs> but he didn't want to, he wanted Magda to be very mysterious. Not really good, not really bad. What was she all about? Who did she really work for? Um, sort of a floating mystery. And we get that. I think we get a, a lot of fans have talked about, is she somebody that starts out bad and gets good and has an arc? Is she neither bad or good? She's sort of like this neutral character that you just have to follow through her journey. Or are we complicating it because we're fans? I, I think it's allowed. It's allowed, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so David, let's, I do have a question about the knives because somebody literally, when they heard that you both were going to be interviewed, and I know you said that you just, through knives, were you throwing it at anything? Because it seemed like you being aggressive in bed, it seemed like an aggressive throw. Um, yes, I did do some knife throwing um, at a blank. There it is now. That's, by the way, they just said a balloon landed on the roof, so we have no idea what that is. Is it a Madonna's sound effects or something? Yeah. <laughs> um, we were, um, y y yes, uh, I was throwing the knives at a blank target without turning or anyone on. Yeah. And that was the one just before the boy had said, I can't bet you can't really get those knives in. So I did get three out of the seven in, which I thought was quite cool. Um, so we were, uh, we were throwing knives. Um, the uh, person who taught us then took over and threw knives at the dummy on the thing and managed to take the dummy's ear off as it was going around actually so it was lucky that I um, and and that was it and then of course the oh there was a trick about the holding the knife there because that was a you started there and you threw it away and then they played the play and play it backwards that was when they, they did things for real <laughs> well so you should have had the brat 
hold the target for the second round. It's just an idea. I don't condone that. Uh, Christina, I men mentioned when I came out here that Octopussy has seemed to have had a revival. And we even talked about it a little bit. I mean, here we are again in front of a, a large audience. There were so many applause and love for Octopussy. Why? What do you think it is about Octopussy? I think it has so much, so much texture, you know, it has so many different little fun things with Roger getting into that uh, uh, car with the German lady and she's got Frankfurters and, you know, it was one thing after another, just cute little moments that tie together into something that's, um, you know, it's sentimental to, to us that we're part of it and, and the audience, I think. It is, and many people saw this when they were younger, um, mm -hmm. and it does, it reads uh, very nostalgic. You know, yes. the look, the feel, the sound. Many, someone was telling me that um, they had uh, bread and they would be sitting there for breakfast reading octopusy cards that came inside the bread bag. Yes. So it does, it hits upon our childhood. Tony and David, for you, tell us about working with Sir Roger Moore, because he just had his birthday yesterday so bring us back a little bit in, in your experience with him. Well, I was phoned up by uh, somebody who was writing about Roger Moore and uh, said, well, what, you know, tell us about this and what, you know. And, and I said, well, he was great. He was, you know, took me back in his Rolls Royce once and, you know, was very relaxed on set. And, and the guy said, I can't get anybody to say anything bad about Roger Moore. It's like, you know, and he really was on set. He was, a, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was a really relaxed man to work with, um, and um, that's all I can say. I'm afraid, you know, I have no wicked stories about him at all. I don't know about David. He had a lot of dirty stories to tell when he was doing his. <laughs> Oh, yes, that, that, I, I couldn't possibly repeat them. Um, I, I have a nice story about him, though. For ten years or so afterwards, I saw him sitting in the same waiting room for the dentist that I was... I, I had a good dentist. Um, and I went, so I went up to him and said, ah, ah, Roger, I nearly killed you ten years ago. Do you remember? Well, I remember the shirts, he says. Um, but uh, he obviously thought it was a bit cool response because he m must have remembered who I was. And later when I was leaving, he got out of his chair across the room and into the hallway and shook my hand and said how nice it was to see me again. Which, stars don't have to do that. It was cool, really nice. Yeah. By the way, we, we only assume that there are nice stories about Sir Roger Moore because he's an incredible ambassador to both UNICEF, to the Bond films, but th when people talk about engagement with fans, he was the best Bond ambassador. I mean, we talk about the next Bond, a lot of us just hope that they are a good ambassador to the fans themselves. We, we ask for so little. But Christina, you canoodled with the guy. Yeah. So you may have a story, and it, again, it doesn't have to be salacious. <laughs> Listen to this crowd, they're on edge. Uh, <laughs> Talk to us about your relationship. You know, I'm, my mind is clicking away. Which story can I really tell them? Because oh, I have some. <laughs> but um, he was very funny. He, you know, he has a very sharp wit. And I remember when we were doing the train sequence, and Maud has a uh, scene where she's being massaged. But in between takes, she had this white uh, terry cloth robe on, very fuzzy and nice. And Roger, he was doing the train, so he had oil on, on his hands. You know, it was pretty, pretty rough. So he walked around, we were all having coffee, and he put his hand on, on her backside and left a, an imprint. Then he came around the other side and put his other hand on that one. So Maud is walking around oh as gosh. if somebody is really... <laughs> <laughs> so we had a lot of fun about that, you know. And then when we were doing the love scene at Pinewood, it was very cold in the 007 stage there. November, I think it was. And um, yeah, we were in my, our ski clothes under those sheets, unfortunately. But anyway, so Roger says, uh, you know, they had built up this uh, uh, set on a... 
I'm losing my, my little oh. goodies. We here. would hate that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, so he goes out on this balustrade that uh, surrounded the stage, and uh, there are two buckets out there, and he set this up. One bucket was full, and the other one was empty. So he says to all the press, he says, oh, this is hard work, I've got to relieve myself. And so he goes out, and he continues to pour the water from one bucket to the next, and the sound effects, you can imagine. And he comes in and he pulls up his fly and he says, ah, oh, I feel so much better, darling. <laughs> so this was continuous. I mean, every day we were in India, and uh, Luis says in his, um, um, you know, uh, suite was down below mine, and we had been warned not to drink the water, which some people didn't adhere to, and they, took an ambulance jet back to London. But, so I was a little paranoid about it. So one morning I get up and I brush my teeth and I shriek out, oh no, and Roger comes up in his uh, dressing gown with a bottle of uh, Jack Daniels. And he says, oh darling, do goggle and swallow. <laughs> <laughs> there goes our family show. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, the stories are so unbelievable. It, yeah, Italy, well, that was another thing. And oh, my God, Australia. But anyway, we, we have to cut it short because well, <laughs> we have some more music coming. We do, we do. Well, before, before I let go my... of you, you really are just taking it all <laughs> off. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> by, the, by the way, there was a confession the other night that you gave that yes. you are contemplating getting an actual octopusy tattoo. Yes. yes. Should she do it? I'm thinking about it. Yeah. 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 yeah and that's another story. Oh, God. I went to the opening of uh, Skyfall, and this girl comes up to me and she says, Oh, Christina, uh, can I see your little octopusy? And, and uh, we were going to go into the ladies' room, and I said, well, um, she said, uh oh, uh, I'll show you mine. And so uh, we go into the bathroom, and she takes off her dress, and, and sure enough, she has a little octopusy on her backside. And I said, gosh, I've got to disappoint you. I don't have mine yet. And she said, oh, no. <laughs> so I feel like maybe I should get one. I, I she doesn't need any encouragement, trust me. You can cheer all you want. She's, she's going to do it. Uh, I, by the way, I think we know who that is. So, Tony, David, you're going to end this shindig because I want to find out, you have a great deal of fans in the room. What does it mean? What does it mean for people to show up to see you tonight after 40 years? What do the fans mean to you? It's extraordinary. Um, 40 years. Um, it occurred to me that in those days, so long ago, <laughs> there was no Netflix, there was no mobile phones, there was no DVDs, there was one or two television programs. <laughs> and, and so, uh, you know, it was very rich. If you had a connection with something, it, it really meant something. Uh, you could watch a video maybe again and again. And, um, and it was, uh, yes, there is a sort of sympathy for it. It's uh, before CGI, you know, there's, a stuffed tiger's head is pushed out of the jungle very quickly at one point. You know, wonderful, like deconstructing cinema, you know, uh, Brechtian almost. And, and uh, uh, you'd never get away with that now. But um, that's the sort of things you got away with then. And uh, there's a great affection for it. We're very touched. Yes. it's. Really lovely. The, the sweetest thing uh, was up at, uh, when we were up at the Neen Valley. A man had two cats called Mishka and Grishka. I just thought that was <laughs> the most touching thing. Um, but it is wonderful to think of something. Uh, and of course, it's quite useful too when people ask you with that pity in their face, <laughs> what have you done? And you mentioned James Bond, and they're down on their knees wherever you are in the world. And it's wonderful, yeah, but sorry, that's just a flip. But it is really lovely to hear and meet people, as we have just been doing, who uh, remember us. Thank you. Remember it.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a rousing round of applause like you're doing already <laughs> to Christina Wayborn, Tony Meyer, and David Meyer. Thank you so much. Yes. And now we do have a treat because now that we've preheated a little bit of octopusy, and by the way, Christina continues to strip on stage. I will pick up your pieces for you. She made those boots herself, just FYI. We have Arrival at the Island of Octopussy, the Chase Bomb theme, 009 gets the knife, and then finally, my favorite, the Palace Fight. Enjoy.
I love that last part. Da -da. I was backstage. By the way, I've been, for you over there, I apologize because I've been dancing this whole time and I don't dance well. A lot of people can attest to that. So we want to actually thank our main sponsor. By the way, this is a two font on there. So those of you that know font size, it's going to be troubling. Steve Dasgupta and his company, iNotary, are a company, do you know him? All right. Who specialize in private international law based in central London. Steve, by the way, I do know Steve. He's a massive Bond fan. He's London Bond on uh, Instagram, and he truly is a big fan. But it's a golden opportunity. This is, like a, this is a real legitimate commercial. I like this. It's a golden opportunity to engage someone that illustrates that the writing is on the wall with law. So, gee, what song is coming up next? I wonder. I think it's appropriate. The writing is on the wall. Tell me. 
All right, for this next bit, I'm actually going to need the man himself to take center stage with me. Warren Ringham, come on up. Oh, thank you. All right. You know these people, right? I know one or two of them. Yeah, a couple. So this is great because we are making good on promise of storytelling, music, song, people, and we're going to include you. Many moons ago, you came up with an original idea and song, a lot of people don't know this, for No Time to Die. Could you tell us all the story? Well, for many, many years, running the show for 19 years now, people have always said, you should do some of your own stuff. And I always said, no, 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 we're not, we don't do that. We do, we're a tribute to the music, that's all we do. And then No Time to Die was announced, and that little initial synopsis, if you remember, of Bond being in Jamaica and having left service. And I got in touch with uh, Kerry's husband, actually, Smiley, who's a very famous drummer and also a very, very accomplished uh, songwriter and producer as well. And I said, do you fancy having a crack at it, just the two of us? So you've got to remember that when we started writing this song, Billy Eilish hadn't even been announced, let alone did we know uh, what we know she was going to sing. And not only that, we didn't know anything about the story other than that tiny little little bit of uh, synopsis. So I got together with uh, Smiley and I said, look, my opinion, and I know you were going to say, oh, you say that now, but I genuinely, I've got the messages to prove it. I said to Smiley, it's nailed on that he's going to die in this film, I thought. But I also thought that being his fifth film, there was an opportunity to kind of reflect back and include little quotes and what have you. And I felt that this song, we need to kind of reflect in the verses that he was out uh, in Jamaica and that he was kind of trying to battle with coming back. And then the chorus would be more of a kind of defiant, I'm not going to die, I'm not going to give in. So, yeah. Is this, all right, so maybe this is a question about your process in general, but I mean, were there certain, how do I put this, traits or criteria of, you know, in Bond songs that you were like, I need to insert these in here somewhere? Yeah, well, have it done this band for so long, I thought, you know, we, we, we really did it for you guys, for the fans, and the Cue the Music followers that have been with us for a long time know this song, you've heard it on, on uh, YouTube and what have you. This is the first time we've ever done it live, and probably will be the only time, and I thought we'd do it as a special treat, but I wanted to put lots of little Easter eggs in for fans, and I, I came up with all these clever ideas, and then when we put it out, nobody could find any of them. So, I better tell you what some of them are, and you can see if you can spot them. So. We tried to incorporate little bits of the songs from all of Daniel Craig's reign. So there's little bits of You Know My Name, the brass line, you'll hear a little ba-dee-da from that soundtrack. If you listen for Another Way to Die, you'll hear some of the piano tings that come in that song, the, the octave piano uh, noises. And then Skyfall and Writings on the Wall, a little bit of a tenuous link, but it does drop down to just piano quite early on. And then there's lots of other things. There's bits of Bond theme in there. There's a Diamonds Are Forever riff. There's even a little bit of a slight nod to on a magic secret service and the most important one for the real geeks in the room and the plus ones will probably have to be explained this to them later but if you remember there was all those rumors about uh safin being dr no wasn't there yes yes it was so it obviously didn't turn out to be the case but at the time we wrote the song i said to smiley i'm pretty sure that safin's dr no so we put a little uh, a little bit of a nod to that in there so you have to see if you can spot it but I really hope that you like it, and I really hope that you want to hear it, and you're not going to go away going, what? Do you want to hear it? Yeah. You want to hear it? I think they want to hear it. And by the way, a little bit of a, a Kreshkin crystal ball moment, because they wound up actually putting some nostalgic music in the movie. So you guys were yeah. ahead of the game. Well, that, I mean, I got to, that was just luck. I mean, obviously, we had no idea any of this was going to be like. So when we wrote it, genuinely, it was 
couple of years before, it was before COVID even took place, we wrote it in that December. And we'd recorded it and everything by the time we knew anything about it. So all this was just fluke, really. All right, we've tortured them enough. Yes. We gave them the appetizer. Let's give them the place. main meal. Ladies and gentlemen, cue the musics. No time to die.
Okay, by show of hands, a little audience participation, who heard most of the Easter eggs that Warren pointed out? I, I see a lot of hands. That's pretty good, Warren. Nice job. That was great. Uh, we're going to actually keep moving it along because we have a lot more to celebrate, I know. So we have the 50th anniversary of Live and Let Die. Yes. Sir Roger Moore. Quick story with this film, and I think this also may mirror a lot of your stories. Um, the reason I'm into James Bond so much, I have a YouTube channel doing this tonight, is because I had a father, very busy, successful guy, but he was a 1960s guy. You know, you walk into the den, there's like wafting smoke from his pipe. I mean, it was that guy. Not a bad father, but didn't spend a lot of time throwing the ball in the backyard. But I remember one afternoon in Atlantic City, New Jersey, it was raining. So what do you do in Atlantic City when it rains? You go to the movies. And I went to the movies and I saw this guy with teeth and a shark and another guy avoiding them. And of course, it was the spy who loves me. And I remember connecting with my father after that and saying, yeah, I kind of want more of that. I was pretty young. But the very next movie that my father showed me proactively, without me asking, was on ABC television, Channel 7, in New York. And he said, come here, I got a surprise for you. And he brought me, without my mom knowing at the time, to watch Live and Let Die, and it was magical. Yeah. And today, when I watch that movie, it continues to be magical, and I know it is for many of you as well. So, we have a very special treat for you. This is the Live and Let Die suite. Prepare yourself, get your crocodile shoes ready, because there's got to be a lot of teeing here. We've got the gun barrel, the occult voodoo shop, the filet of soul, Bond meets solitaire, whisper who dares, <sighs> take a break, Bond chase part one, trespassers will be eaten, and for those of you that requested part two, boat chase part two. Ladies and gentlemen, live and let die.
Oh boy. Uh, yeah. So like a coconut with a dart gun, do not shoot the messenger when I say this, but we are approaching the end of the show. I know, I know. You know what, Warren, can you join me for a second? I got questions. So Warren, you, you and Q the Music gave us a little bit of a scare not too long ago. Um, and I don't know if a lot of you knew this, but it seemed like at least a retirement. I'll be <laughs> polite in saying it. Involuntary retirement. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's more on brand. Um, so are you back? Because this really feels like you are back. Thank you. Honestly, this won't be anywhere near the speech it was last year, I promise, for those of you that were there. No, but I mean, a lot of people, even this week, have been messaging me saying, I thought you'd finished. And, you know, last year was the last show for a, a gazillion reasons. Um, and actually, one of them, of many reasons, was that I was really worried that we would get to a point where people were bored with Cue the Music. I didn't want to stay around past our welcome. And then we did that show last year, and then the number of messages we had afterwards I mean, I say it was over a thousand, I didn't count it, but it was, my phone was just in meltdown for weeks and weeks and weeks, and it was clear, we all came off the stage feeling it, I know I did, you all did, that it wasn't the right time yet. And I'm super motivated, I think we're gonna be around now for a few more years, I mean, I'm a glutton for punishment. That's incredibly good, all right, so you say a few years, we all like a trailer, a sneak peek. Is there anything coming up next year we should know about? Yeah, there's a tour. <laughs> oh, well, uh, he's really back. <laughs> I know, I know. You should hear what my wife thinks, but there we go. Yeah, we are doing a small tour. Uh, we did miss it, and I know for those of you that really are really big Bond fans, I know maybe the one or two songs that we cut tonight to get some of these amazing cues in, um, you know, you might have missed them, but we will be doing them again next year on tour. Some great shows where you can see all the songs, and then we will do another big London show, hopefully sometime next year, October, where we will do some, some great stuff to mark the Goldfinger anniversary and the Man with the Golden Gun. Yes. But uh, before, we, before you say anything else, I really have got to take this moment to tell you guys, the suites that we've done tonight, I mean, we've done something like 40 minutes of brand new music, Live and Let Die, Sweet Octopussy, From Us With Love. Do you know who these guys played it once this afternoon and that's it? I mean, yeah. what about them? I witnessed that. It was amazing. All right. Because of this, and how hard everybody works, where can this group, beyond obviously tonight, where can they support you? Oh yeah, great, great question. So obviously we're on all the social media channels, but the most important thing, and especially if I'm so many people asking about the after show party and what have you, you must go on the website and sign up for the friend scheme that's the only way that you're going to probably get a good chance of, uh, of getting, on for the, getting in for these sorts of things. And you get all the best notice of when the tickets are going to be on sale, where we're going to be. And there's lots of other great benefits as well. So make sure you go on the website. It's quite clear. It says sign up. Just put your email in. And I promise you I won't send you loads of emails. It's maximum 12 a year, something like that. All right. Well, first of all, promise you'll never scare us again, all of you, because we need you, um, especially in this time and age. I think we need to have this escapist moment, and you provided that tonight. Nobody is bored, right? Thank you so much for all your incredible support. Thank you. All right. So we're going to let Warren go back and do what he does. Um, you know, they say, they say that Quantum of Solace as a movie uh, gets better if you watch it right behind Casino Royale as almost like a 1.5 of Casino Royale. I happen to love Quantum of Solace, but we're gonna try this tonight, but in music form. Let's see if it works. So, we have You Know My Name and Another Way to Die back to back. Yeah. 
thank you for coming this evening. Let's show our appreciation for the people that made this happen. Sound and technical team, Karen, Chris, Joe, and Ed. Our principals, our musical director and manager, Warren Ringham. Dan Booth on guitar. Matt Walker on vocals. Of course, the one and only Perry Schultz on vocals. And ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Cue the Music. I'm gonna I'm gonna put them on the spot for a second. Does anybody have a hankering for an encore? I know they've worked so hard, but let's see if we can get one more out of them. All right. <laughs> Some of them have to go to the bathroom. Who knew? But I think I think we can actually muster one that is kind of unique. And again, it's one that's grown over time in some people's minds and hearts. And that is. License to Kill. Now we're all just we're all just plugging in again. It's difficult in the one time you wanted to speak for longer. Yeah. 
stand here by your side. Your side. Oh, baby, now you can depend. Wow. Wow. Here we are. <laughs> we both have the same word. Wow. <laughs> Just bring the volume down of this end credits. With a little nod to the Master of Love end credits, yeah. by the way. Look, look, look. It says not quite the end. Yeah. That's everything. Well, what an amazing evening and so many just fantastic comments and so many people watching. We've had pretty much 500 people all the way through, haven't we? Yeah, there was a ton of people coming in and out at different times. So, uh, it, but you're, like you said, it was a great crowd. Everybody was so engaged and vocal. I mean, what I loved about it was people were able to celebrate, oh, this is my favorite song, but then they loved the rendition. You know, yeah. they love the homage pieces. They love the little nods. It was just great to watch it from this view. And as I mentioned, not to just hear it from backstage. Yeah. Yeah, it was really great fun to relive it. And, you know, it's for, for me to be able to watch it without having the pressure of living it. Well, same as you, as you say, 
it's just nice to be able to just relax and and enjoy it with everybody watching it you know because ultimately i know that you and i obviously were responsible for it but we are still just fans as well aren't we and so we kind of get into all of that the whole vibe of the evening just like everybody else watching because that's where we started out as a bomb fan you know yeah i know i'm the most incredibly biased person in saying this but i always feel like fans do the best they do the best job because they're going to put that extra something into it they're going to put their passion into it i mean david arnold was a fan before he was professional and it translates so well because i think that the pressure that you have and i saw you during rehearsal is not because I need to do a great show for myself and be the best I can be. It's you want to give the best performance for the audience. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what just motivates the whole the whole thing and it always has from the start, you know. It was in some ways I wanted to plug the gap that was missing for fans. But when we started nobody else was doing it and I know there are lots of bomb concerts around the world now. Crikey, there's loads just in the UK. But how can I say this? You know, I think a lot of them that what they're doing is just another night's work. You know, it's another way of um, adding a concert or a, a repertoire to a roster of many different themes. Whereas for us, it, we live and breathe it. It's for me, it's seven days a week, 365 days a year, not just doing cue the music, but just being a fan. And so for me, this is a little bit like um, scratching a, 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 an itch really to, to do there. it because... Hey, uh, and it's just down there. I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. I'm a yeah. I know. As soon as I said it, I thought, <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have gone down this path. <laughs> well, let me. Yeah. So, a few questions. First of all, somebody asked just now. Um, this is a genuine question from Martin yeah. Barrett, who says, um, "Is everyone in the orchestra a Bond fan?" Um, everyone's a Bond fan. There's obviously different levels of fandom. Um, Mine being probably the top end of that scale, on obviously, uh, probably the next biggest Bond fan after myself is the flute player Katie Bicknell. I think um, she she's was amazing. a massive Bond fan, yeah. Um, and there are lots of others within it. In fact, I don't know if people are aware, but we've got two people in the band that you heard tonight that were actually played on the No Time to Die soundtrack. Uh, one of our trumpet players was the lead trumpet player on there. He also played on Die Another Day and Tomorrow Never Dies as well. And uh, on top of that, one of the horn players was on No Time to Die as well. So, um, yeah, you, you know, there's lots of links to both Bond fandom and actually the authentic Bond music. And obviously, I've said it many times, people probably know, but my dad actually played on one of John Barry's, in fact, two of John Barry's albums, the movie Ola um, albums. So, you know, there's a lot of um, connections and and uh, passion and love for all of that music. Should we remove the big black box? Yeah, let's do it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I'm, I'm not great at multitasking. You're so used to doing it now. So <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. I'm like, it's his show. Don't touch it. By the way, yeah. I gotta, I gotta just throw this comment up here. You know, the one thing that I would say to your discussion about other bond orchestras that that are out there there are there are bond orchestras and there are bond orchestras this is the <laughs> latter and a couple of people have said it i think the difference is not just your in arrangements and your talent of course that's there but you don't bring that authentic feel you you feel as you know that these are fans and so they are giving that little extra effort um in fact one of the things i said at the beginning of the show if you were there folks you heard me say that weekend, certainly the O2 Arena weekend, turns into a celebration. Um, but what does that mean for you? The fact that people are coming from all around the world, sometimes spending three to four days in London oh. just for those three to four hours of music. It's, it's amazing. I, it never ceases to amaze or ceases to uh, just blow my mind that people are coming from all over the world to see the show it it's incredible i mean you know when we started and i've said it many times we, we had that first tour where we barely sold any tickets in fact we had one show where we didn't sell a single ticket what? so yeah i know i know but it will but that, going through that makes you so much more appreciative of the success and the support and 
what's been amazing in this journey is that more and more as we've as we've gone through the years, I feel like we've brought more people into our kind of cue the music family. You know, there's the whole supporter group now. Uh, there's the thank you for the music group on Facebook, and these people have have bought into supporting this journey, and we're all on it together. And I really believe that. You know, um, I, I know that that people can just come and buy a ticket and come to a concert, but for so many it's become more than that they've kind of wanted to see this incredible journey and 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 go on it with us and we couldn't have done it without those people um but particularly the ones who have come to multiple shows and sponsored the band and patrons and the else they literally kept the show going and you know i know these other bands and these other orchestras have obviously looked at what we've done and gone wow that's an amazing success it's obviously a, a money spinner we should get on the bandwagon but it's only a success because of the passionate support of the Bond community and those people that have joined us on the journey and have been like almost, I said it at the uh, Majesty's, my, my 15 minute speech, but they've almost refused to, to let Cue the Music fail, even though it's tried so hard over the years, you know, to, to, it's been real struggle at times, but people have just been sort of bought into that and said, no, we are not going to let it let it fail on our watch and then even when i tried to finish it <laughs> people didn't let us do that so you know no. that's that's amazing i mean how can that not motivate motivate and inspire you it it you can't help it i think you, you said a key word in there you said the word community and i think it gets dinged by a few people saying oh how can you anoint this a community but mm. there is a cue the music community that have really come together and it's yeah. so large and I'm, I'm i'm sure it's even larger than you realize and imagine it's so far reaching that they do come together they hold arms i've seen them in in you know like you said the thinner times the lower times during covid um straight through to now where it's become people are so thankful and and i've i've received some emails after the last o2 arena with some people that attended um, one gentleman, I, I'll just share this and obviously not his name, but he shared that he has a lot of social anxiety, but he was able to come to the concert and he had to spend about a week just making sure that he could mentally get prepared for that. And after that, he became just being a part of that community where he knew he would be accepted, that he was amongst people that kind of, you know, were like him because of the love and passion for Bond. And it sent him soaring that he was able to do little things, nothing miraculous, but little things even after that. And you don't realize that people aren't just leaving here. You're getting a lot of thanks right now with the music, but it can actually change people's lives a bit. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, you, you do your best to keep up with all of these things. And th there are so many things. And sometimes people don't always share them with you. I mean, obviously, that that particular gentleman shared it with you, but not with me. Um and those sorts of stories are just so heartwarming. And and uh, I always say as well that people say to me, "Oh, I'm I've got no one to go with." I said, "Just come because there are you, you will be welcomed." You know, and I if I ever see anyone standing on their own at one of our concerts, I'll always make an effort. I'll, well, not an effort, but I will always just go over and say hello and you know chat from the stuff and make them feel welcome because that's the great thing about James Bond is that you know we all share that love. We've all spent our entire love our entire life growing up with James Bond as part of our 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 lives, our upbringing. And that's the thing that, forgive the word, but it bonds everyone and brings us all together. And you can go to a space like that on your own and you can have maybe um, anxiety issues like like you described there, but, but you're never going to find a more welcoming and friendly bunch of people than James Bond fans in that environment. And they come, they're so excited as well. Um, I remember the Majesty's Theatre probably the best moment of my professional life. I mean, away from my kids being born, one of the greatest moments ever, I think, was uh, when we were waiting to go on stage, we had, or we were on stage, sorry, at the start of the show, and we we're supposed to have this play on track, which is supposed to play for 90 seconds. And then the curtain was supposed to come up and we'd start playing. But the, the guy who was operating the curtain misunderstood and he fired it up as soon as the play on track started so we had 90 seconds where the band were all going to have to stand there on stage like waiting for this track to play out so we could start but the minute this curtain went up the whole place just erupted into a standing ovation like 1200 people all just completely on the spur of the moment and we're all looking at each other on stage going 
this is just unbelievable. This just doesn't happen. You go through yeah. your whole musical professional life and you just don't experience this kind of passion. And, and you know, you know, you've won when you've got a standing ovation before you've even played a note. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's a, no, that's a huge deal. By the way, um, almost like a trailer, if you will. We've got to kind of leave people with a, a sneak preview, if you will, of, I know that you have a, a round of different showings, but I've got a certain amount of heart, if you will, for the O2 Arena one. I know that I've been we've been posting up sort of the ticket link here for people to join us. What can, if you can share anything, what can people expect out of this year's O2 concert? Well, the great thing is, first and foremost, everything you've seen tonight is just the best kind of advert for it, because it is it's obviously we're going to change some of the content and we're going to have different guests and some really, really exciting music cues will replace some of the suites that we've had this year. But in terms of the experience, it was everything that you got tonight, though in person, as I said in one of the comments, you know, you get this level of adrenaline and energy and, and passion that you just can't get through you know, this screen, you need to be in the room to really, really feel that. And, and anyone that's been to a Cue the Music show will back me up on that and say, you know, that is the really, really big difference. But yeah, we've got brilliant guests this year, Maud Adams, Britt Eklund, two of the biggest celebrities we've ever had at any of our shows, which is really exciting. You're going to be there, which is obviously the, the, the biggest the biggest celebrity, clearly. Uh, yeah, right. And, um, you know, lots of great new cues of music. Um 20 minutes of Goldfinger, as I said earlier. Uh, Scaramanga's Fun House, we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing Let's Go Get Them, some great cues from Round of the Golden Gun. And backseat drivers on the program this year. And then some other little surprises. If people enjoy it, I might have something up my sleeve for the encore. And, and you're so, focusing yeah. on the anniversaries, right? I mean, for the most yes. part. Absolutely. You know, with, with 60th anniversary for Goldfinger and 50th for the Man with the Golden Gun in particular, yeah. you know, there's such um, there's such a big tie in with with gold theme. How could we not do that? And then to have the opportunity to bring Maud and Brit um, over from the States for this. And a big thank you as well. I must give a shout out to 007 GB who have, have put on an event as well to coincide. And that fantastic support from them has meant that we've been able to sort of fund this. Um, but yeah, it'd be great to see as many people there as possible. And I know it's not the one that you're involved in, but if you can't make the O2 or you want to see some of the other songs that perhaps we don't fit into this big show, things like From Rush With Love and All Time High and Golden Eye, Tomorrow Never Dies, Wells Enough, those songs, then we've got another 11 dates on tour around the country throughout this year. Just go on the website, have a look, and uh, hopefully we'll see people there. Yeah, and by the way, the website has been right above our heads the whole time, lest it's you as if it was planned. I know, unless you can't go into the comments or anything like that. Warren, what do you think? Anything else uh, that we've left on the table? No, but I do want to say what a massive thank you to people that have stuck out nearly four hours. Incredible, incredible. I, I, I mean, you must all be starving, absolutely dying for a drink, Ladder. dying for a comfort break and um, must be very, very sore from sat in the seats. But it's uh, absolutely brilliant to have shared the evening with so many Bond fans. And the comments have been lovely. So many great friends I've seen as well in, the, in there. So it's, it's been a wonderful evening, hasn't it? It's been amazing. I've loved every minute of it, enjoying it um, and seeing it from this version, but also seeing it through the eyes of others. And then so many people saying, uh, there was a few people that were saying they pulled their spouse into watching this as well. Which I love that, you know, sort of sharing the love of what Cue the Music's done. Um, Warren, thank you. Um, thank Warren you, is thank the you. last person to thank himself or thank his team <laughs> or his group. Um, but, you know, this was your this was your child. And thank you for allowing us to relive these moments. And we're looking forward to actually living more with you in the future. Thank you, David. And thank you so, so much for coming over and presenting it. And hopefully this is an annual thing now, isn't it? This is the plan. So, um, yeah, we, we've got lots to look forward to in the future. And as I say, please, if you can, it, I know it's great to sit and watch it at home, but come out and see the show. You'll have a great night. And most importantly, it, it helps the show keep going and survive. We need people to come out and support it. And that's how we can sort of do things like tonight, which is 
absolutely a joy to be able to bring this to people and and share it with the community but please come and support it as well yeah you always ask you always hear about people supporting the arts now you can support the arts and james bond and a friend and the community so with that we'll leave you to it thank you so much everybody for joining us and we'll see you very soon hopefully live and in person take care everyone cheerio everybody